today is um, the day of the first Latinum culture broadcast. And I thought, as it's the beginning, we will deal with uh, fundamental issues. Precisely those pertaining to the <coughs> fundament. According to Carlyle in Sartor Resartus, man's earthly interests are all hooked and buttoned together and held up by clothes. Talking about uh, Teufelsdruch, his uh, hero, I suppose, the uh, absent-minded, crazy professor of Sartor Resartus. Society, he says, is founded upon cloth. Society sails through an infinitude of cloth on Faust's mantle, rather like the sheet of clean and unclean beasts in the Apostle's dream, without which such sheet or mantle would sink to endless depths and mount insane limbos, and in either case, be no more. Be that as it may. Romans, we um, apparently are told, um, wore neither uh, stockings, that is, uh, leggings, nor breeches. Breeches, of course, cover the breech, that breech being, uh, mm, you know, the thing we cover with our underwear mm, to avoid uh, skid marks and stuff like that. Well, they didn't wear them. Although a pair of Roman breeches have been found in London in the Walbrook, a pair of leather breeches, an uh, expensive article, something unlikely to be lost unless mislaid in some act of uh, flagrante delicto. It's thought, anyway, that these belong to an acrobat, not uh, a normal, upright, you know, sort of doughty Roman. A very interesting observation was recently made at the International Medieval Congress on uh, underwear and education. Fascinating. Apparently, according to researchers, people started to wear underwear en masse, so to speak, around about the year 1200. And uh, Marco Mostert at the University of Utrecht has told us that this led to an enormous amount of rags as people started to throw their old underwear away. Obviously, they uh, had the underwear, but they didn't have the toilet paper, because, you see, here's the catch-22. To get the paper, you need the underwear. And, indeed, the rags from the discarded underwear uh, led to a technological breakthrough, um, in that uh, all this cloth could then be used to make cheap paper, which meant that cheap books could be produced, and that means that people could read a lot more. Uh, of course, what they were reading at this point uh, wasn't so great, but uh, it wasn't that long from uh, you know the 1200s to the uh, rediscovery of Lucretius and uh, papers of Cicero and uh, the uh, republishing of uh, all of our Roman classics uh, in the mid to late 1400s and onwards. So we owe quite a lot to this fundamental issue of of underwear. And uh, it's quite possible that in Roman society, education didn't reach as far as it could have, simply because the Romans didn't wear underpants. How about that for a cultural side road and by road? The Romans, of course, did have access to various types of paper. Uh, papyrus from Egypt the principal kind of paper, and uh, nevertheless, it was an expensive luxury item. And in terms of European history, the um, supply of Egyptian paper dried up after the Muslim conquest um, of Egypt. So we have to remember that books were incredibly expensive and were were luxury items. To get a book, firstly, you had to be rich enough to be able to afford sheepskin. But it wasn't just any old sheepskin. It was sheepskin that had been intensively prepared by being soaked in urine to remove the hairs, and then ground down very finely with pumice stones, 
and then sent to a fuller where it was bleached and whitened, stretched on a frame, and then rubbed more with pumice stones to get it shiny and smooth until finally you had something that was of a good enough quality to write on. This either entailed uh, owning lots of slaves who would do it for you, but then you had to feed your slaves, and so you had to be rich enough to do that, or you had to purchase it, and that was a very expensive thing to do. If you were going to write an entire book, you either had to write a very small, which is what people did to uh, um, save money. Alternatively, you were very rich and you could afford to have your writing slightly larger. But a book would cost, you know, a very, very lot of money. Uh, it's hard to conceive of how much. And so only very wealthy people had books, and books were a status symbol. For, for example, if we, if we look at um, um, rabbinic writings from this time period, from the Roman time period, it's quite clear that books were very expensive. The, uh, the prayers, for example, had to be memorized. The assumption was that there wasn't anybody in the congregation who had access to a book to read the prayers from, and all the regulations, etc., related to that, assume the non-existence of books as they were simply far too expensive and printed prayer books in Judaism only come about really at the same time period as, as printing for non-Jews in Europe. So this issue of, of underwear and books and rags and paper, well, these fundamental issues, these little thought about matters, such as the grave importance of recycling, but what is interesting, of course, is, is the Catch-22 business. I find this quite fascinating that, uh, you know, you need underwear to make paper. Because there's no toilet paper, the underwear gets used up much faster because to clean it, you have to boil it. And if you boil your underwear, um, that deteriorates it much faster, uh, which then leads to much more thrown away underwear, which means you can get more paper. But this paper, of course, can't be used for toilet paper because it's far too precious a resource. So we have, simply because of changes in fashion, and we're not sure what led to these changes in fashion, but changes in fashion, um, hey presto, more paper. That's how the world works, in weird, wonderful, and fascinating and curious ways. And that is the end of this very short, first, cultural um, and fundamental instalment from the Latinum podcast in London, England. We will now follow a short announcement from our sponsor, without which this podcast could not remain free.